Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. Uh, today we're trying to diagnose a heater problem here. I already, you know, kind of know what's going on here, but I wanted to tell you guys and show you guys how I came to that conclusion in case you run across this someday on your heater. Uh, basically about, I don't know, a month ago or, or so, uh, we started noticing our our blower, our, our outlet or our inlet, I guess, for the airflow in where the heater vent is, is actually in our living room. And so we started noticing that the blower was getting a little louder. And I thought, I might need a new filter or something like that. So I changed the filter out. That didn't seem to change anything. So uh, a little more time went by. And one day I woke up and I was like, what is that? A helicopter landing on my roof? And it turned out that something's making noise inside of this unit. And I want to show you guys how we kind of came to that conclusion. Uh, first, I'm going to try to give you a sample of what it sounds like. As you can see, probably saw before, this is a Linux unit. So it should be basically the same on pretty much every heater. They all pretty much work like this. So I'm going to cycle the fan on and see if we can hear the noise. Uh, on my heater, you can do that by simply turning it on to auto run on the fan. It just says fan on, so I'm going to flip it onto that. So hopefully you guys are hearing that. It's kind of a thumping sound. And what's weird about it is it's not really consistent. So it, you know, it would seem like if it was like a fan blade or something coming off, it would be a consistent tick, 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 or something like that. Uh, but this thing is very rhythmic. It'll go bump, 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 bump. You know, it's just, it's really weird. So uh, I started looking into it. I'm gonna flip that off. And just you can just hear it. I don't know if you guys heard that, but when it was winding down, I could hear it making a very weird noise. And I can't quite put my finger on it. It's not metal to metal sound, uh, but it's something thumping around, or maybe the motor's going bad. I don't know. But let me show you how I figured that out. What if it, that it was the blower motor rather than something else inside of the heater? So I'm gonna pull this cover off, set it aside. And this bottom cover here is switched. So I'm making sure you guys have plenty of light here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, this bottom lid here is switched, the bottom cover. So pull that up and I got this hose in my way. We'll pull that out of the way, but there's actually a switch here that shuts off the control board power whenever this thing, when this panel is off. So. Let me get you in here and show you what the blower looks like. Okay, so back behind all those wires there, oh, back behind all of this, that's your blower motor. Uh, sometimes called a squirrel cage. Uh, that's actually the fan inside of there. So now that the button is not pushed here on this, this is that little close-up of that button, the safety switch, that when you have that cover off, there's no power going into this. It cuts the power to that. Uh, now clearly there's still power going into that switch so if you touch that you could possibly get shocked so i'd stay i'd just you know be cautious with all the wires uh treat them as if they're live and if you want to be double safe go ahead and go flip the breaker that controls the heater circuit and that'll make sure there's no power going into this unit while you're working on it which would be highly advisable go ahead and do that never trust this kind of stuff here because like i said you might think you're you're all off on all your power, but you don't realize it. And you accidentally hit this switch here on the, you know, maybe with the ring of your, your gold ring on your finger and it'll, it'll definitely light you up. So don't let that happen. Uh, so anyways, uh, let me see if I can make this thing run and we'll hopefully we'll be able to pick up the vibration that's happening. I don't know if I've thrown a weight on my squirrel cage or on the fan itself, or if the motor's going bad, I've actually already pulled the motor out and I oiled it and checked it out and the end play seemed okay on the motor but uh, I'm thinking I must have suddenly my fan must have just went bad and I actually when I took it out the first time I cleaned it out and it wasn't really that dirty but I went ahead and cleaned it out and that didn't make any difference at all so let me flip the fan back on So 
So I'm gonna let off this button and it'll start winding down. So the reason I showed you this is this is how you can isolate and determine, hey, what, what part of the heater is my problem coming from? Is it just when the blower kicks on? Is it only, you know, and it, this also could apply to your air conditioner if your blower goes bad in the, in the summertime rather than in the, in the wintertime. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys this, how to, how to isolate and determine what the problem is. I think I'm going to have to order at very least a new fan blade and we're going to try that. Might try that first just for economy's sake. And uh, the problem with that though is to figure that out, I have to pull this, all this stuff out. You have to disconnect this box, drop it down. You have to, this thing's on a slide back here. You take a couple of screws out up at the top and this whole thing slides out, but it's pretty darn heavy. So it's not really that fun to do. Uh, so I'm fixing to do that and attempt to pull this all out and see if we can get us a new blade. Uh, when I get it out of here on the floor, uh, I'll show you guys more about it. Okay, we're gonna get all of our motor wires disconnected. And I took a picture before I took, disconnected those wires just to make sure I get them back in the right, right order. There's also a plug down here that has to be disconnected. So now I think that's everything. We're ready to unbolt this box and move it up out of our way. I've got a bungee handy, so I'm just going to tie this up out of the way, careful not to break any of the wires. There's a rail here. You can see this one pretty well. There's one on the other side as well. So that these two bolts basically lock it back into place. Uh, and secure it once it's all the way back in position and lined up. To get it out, you take these two bolts out and then you slide it off of that rail. Okay. Now that should be it. Stay away from this capacitor. If you have to mess with this, you have to lay a screwdriver, an insulated screwdriver across it just to short it out to make sure that you don't get electrocuted because they can store a charge. Uh, so I've been told. Anyways, I'm going to pull this out now. And I have to watch out for these wires here and kind of get them out of my way. Okay, so we wrestled that bear out of there. Uh, here's your motor and all the information like the model number and stuff like that, how much power, 
uh, 110, 220, whatever the voltage is, that kind of stuff's all going to be listed here on this tag. So you'll probably have to take these screws out uh, to pull the motor out and take a look at that. But I just wanted to show you this. I mean, this is the blower. Actually, that's the first time I've heard it make any noise just from me spinning it by hand. So. Okay. Okay, I see what the deal is. Huh. That kind of makes me wonder if I couldn't fix this thing. So, let me see if I can get you in here and show you what I've just discovered here. I'll try to zoom in and get you guys some more lighting. That's maybe about as good as I can get it. Let's see if this picks up here. Basically what I just discovered is as I'm moving this, I can see these two plates that hold the uh, blower together. I can see them, they're separated right there. And it's making me wonder if I couldn't just go get some sheet metal screws and run that in and tighten it up. Yeah, it's on this side, it's only on this one side but I can see quite a bit of movement there. And I don't know, again, if you guys are going to be able to see that, but there's a gap in here that when I'm wiggling this, for one, just on this one side, I'm getting more play on it. That's how I kind of discovered it. I was wiggling it here on the end, and I could see that opening up right there. So I don't think it's the motor. I definitely think it's the squirrel cage, but the question is, is can I MacGyver fix this thing to get me by for a while? All right, got the motor and everything separated from the squirrel cage. So now we can pull that out. So what's going on here is there's two wheels, two plates that hold everything together in the center. You hear that rattle? Now is a good time to compare the two wheels, make sure that everything's the same, the same diameter, stack them on top of each other, check that, uh, same height, uh, and the bore on the shaft. But everything looks good on this one. And I ordered mine from supplyhouse.com and they were great. They got them to me, got the part to me really quick and it was one of the cheapest prices that I could find online. And it's a made in the USA part, how rare is that? So let's get this new one installed.
Okay, everything's looking good, so we're gonna reinstall it and turn it on, see how it goes. All right, before we button it up, let's test it out and see how we did. Just flipping the fan on. Oh yeah, buttery smooth. All right, just make sure your wires are out of the way and button everything back up. Alright, sounds good. It's blowing good. Uh, we should be back in business. Appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, hit the thumbs up. And until then, we'll see you next time.